We'll go ahead and get started. This session is being recorded, so if you do need to jump off, um, I will send the link to your human resource department with the person that I've been working with. And just know that um, all identities are not recorded in the session. So uh, just to make everyone aware of that, this will also be posted on our YouTube channel, which will be uh, links will be provided in a follow-up email. So I think we've still got about five or so joining. We're going to go ahead and get started and ease into this. We want to welcome all of the ArcGIS employees. We are so excited to be able to give you this presentation. Um, I was looking over some of the uh, registrations and we got people from Maine to Ohio, Texas, California. It was really exciting to see everybody sign up. So we are, we are so honored to have you guys with us today and, and give us a chance to tell you a little bit about us and, and maybe how you know our programs could really uh, help you in, in your future here. So. Uh, we want to ask if you save all questions until the end of the presentation. We, This is a very brief presentation. We want to allow enough time for people to be able to um, ask questions. Um, and of course, if it's something very specific to you that you don't want to ask in the chat, you're going to have my contact information and you can always follow up with me. Uh, please, if you could refrain from using this hand feature in this session, it is a distraction to the presenters. Again. Everyone will have ample time to ask questions at the very end. And we ask that all questions will be typed in the chat box. Uh, there will not be an audio feature uh, during this session with the amount of people that were, were signed up. So with that, thank you again. We're so excited to be with you today on here. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I am the moderator. My name is Karen Hickenbotham. I'm the program manager in the Master of Science and Operations Management program. Um, also on with me, we've got a special guest with us today, Dr. Carrie Beam. Uh, she is all the way in California, so uh, we are so blessed to have her with us, and she is going to do a fantastic presentation for you here in just a few moments. And also on the line, I've got Carol Altum. She is the assistant director to the MSOM program, and she's kind of my backup chat sidekick link provider, so um, she'll be putting some stuff in chat, so, so uh, you can um, watch that throughout the session here. So for our Master of Science and Operations Management programs, we have a Master of Science in Operations Management, Engineering Management, and Engineering. Uh, for the sake of today's presentation, we will focus on the Master of Operations Management, but I do have some folks on the line that can speak to the Engineering or the E program as well. We also uh, have three graduate certificates. We have Project Management, Lean Six Sigma, and Homeland Security. We'll get to those in just a moment. I know some of the students uh, specifically mentioned these uh, the certificates that they were interested in, and we're going to have um, a little bit uh, more in-depth on those here in a few moments. So for those of you who don't know what operations management is, uh, I was again looking through your registrations and I noticed that a lot of people uh, were already in this field. But to put it simply, operations management professionals, they plan, lead, and they manage business operations. Uh, OM uses industrial engineering techniques to enable individuals and organizations to maximize effectiveness and make superior decisions. So a little bit about our MSOM program. We were established in 1974, and we are the largest graduate program on the U of A campus here in Fayetteville. Uh, we have over 5,000 graduates who uh, took our program and successfully passed and you know, were prepared to be leaders in their industry. Uh, we have 90% of our students, actually over 90%, uh, completing the degree online. Uh, that was before and during the pandemic. Uh, we have 65 instructors who have real world experience and 35 MSOM graduate courses are offered each year. So what can I do with an operations management Master of science degree? There is really a wide variety of things that you can do and that's what we, we wanna be able to answer your questions because whether or not you are wanting to advance in the current position or department that you're in, whether you are looking to make a career change um, or just simply improve effectiveness um, in your current position. So depending on where you're at and depending on where you want to be um, is what you could do with our MSOM degree. So right now I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Carrie Beam. Uh, she is with us today. I had worked with um, 
your ArcBest representative and, and asked her how could we tailor this to the needs of ArcBest employees. And uh, being an alum of the program herself, she gave me some great insight. And Dr. Bean was gracious enough to put together some uh, information about kind of what our program can actually um, help you be an ArcBest employee. So Dr. Bean, thank you so much for being here. And I'll go ahead and uh, keep the slides going, but I'm going to hand the presentation over to you, OK? Fantastic. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. My first question, as always, is can you hear me OK? You are sounding just fine. Thanks for checking. Fantastic. That's one of our running jokes is how many PhDs does it take to get me off of mute? And the answer is often one more than we currently have. Um, but the good news is the overeducated anonymous crowd is coming to our quest today. So what is MSOM and how can it boost my career, your career, is a Master's of Science in Operations Management. It's somewhere between an MBA, where you don't earn all money, and MSE, where you learn all about bright, shiny things with blinking lights. Uh, we teach you the technical skills you need. You get a master's degree from an accredited university to move into management, a fully online and asynchronous. That means is it operates on your schedule, not ours. A tuition reimbursement is often available. And I can just recently add, if you become a Razorback, you will now begin to be able to cheer for a football team that wins something every so often. So really, what's not to love? This course descriptions, I'm going to talk to you about four classes. One of them is risk management, one of them is supply chain management, one is quality management, and the last is Lean Six Sigma. And I could sort of see in the audience, a lot of you guys are nodding your heads. You're like, yep, I could see how if I knew how to do that better, it would really boost my career. Let, but don't just take my word for it. We're going to, throughout this presentation, introduce you to some of our students. So this is Sydney Ball from Alabama. Sydney graduated. She said, I enjoyed the flexibility to study project management and prepare to take the PMP exam. I spent a good bit of my time in my current position forecasting financials for projects. So accuracy and the ability to think outside the box is critical. You can this. If you have an employee who can, like, forecast accurately and run projects on time, this is great. You could take our risk management class. If you take this class, I teach it, so full disclosure, you might get to take it with me. We apply tools to identify, assess, and calculate risk. And we don't just look at it and be like, gosh, that's risky, or no, you shouldn't do that. Uh, we actually use software tools to quantify risk. We use Excel and a free add-in called SIPMath where you can actually simulate 10,000 runs of a policy or a decision and see of how many of those did it turn out to be a really good or really bad idea. This is a lot cheaper than running 10,000 trucks down the highway and seeing which ones crash. We had some cool class projects. One of our students did some drill bindings. I'm looking at reliability for drills in an operating room. And the coolest one, maybe, was from the Air Force. We had um, a military student did bird strike mitigation. Um, I guess birds and airplanes hit each other on approach and takeoff more than you would think. I think the bird thinks the airplane is a big bird. And so they're looking at risk mitigation for this. So that's just an example of some of the class projects we have. You could be like Brandon. Brandon is from North Carolina, and he is working at the NCAA, the athletic people. And this is kind of cool because I'm an engineer, and to put it mildly, I did not make it through college on any kind of athletic scholarship. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to be able to touch the coattails of people who do. But he talks about the use of project management, change management, leadership principles, HR management, and other electives provided me with the skills to make impact at the NCAA. So here we have a graduate with good quantitative skills. He can also talk to people and play nice. And this is a super winning combination in the job market. And the only thing more winning than that is to being able to have what you need when you need it. There's the supply chain. It's the science of getting stuff in, keeping track of it while you have it, and then getting it out to the right spots. We, run, we teach you how to do decision models for the supply chain. So inventory, cost, forecasting, sourcing decisions. We really boost your spreadsheet modeling skills. I don't know if you've ever been like, on an Excel spreadsheet and you're like, I just want the thing to do this and I don't have the skills to do that pivot table or that VLOOKUP or that index function. Um, when you come out of our program, you will have those skills. You will be fluent in Excel. In this class project, uh, we play the beer game. Um, it's not actually um, a live action drinking game. It is a simulation inventory management game. You get to pretend that you're a beer manufacturer and you have to play it with and without 
quantitative forecasts. So if we let you really experience what it's like, how many of us work our jobs today without rigorous formal quantitative forecasting, and then to do it with and see how much better it goes to get your beer to your customers when you've got the right forecast. What did the students say about supply chain management? I appreciated the online collaboration sessions and group activities. I found the instructor's obligations outside of teaching this course beneficial and unique to the content application. What that basically means is he's done this in the real world, so he knows what he's doing. And then realistic and extremely current situations could be explained so that I can apply topics directly. What that means is when we run out of stuff during COVID, now I know why. So. We've got another student, Mark is from Texas. He's got a BS in electronics engineering technology. So he came to us looking to expand not his quantitative skills, but his organization and leadership skills. So he says, with project management courses, leadership tools, and analytical skills I obtained from this program, I feel confident I can excel in my new leadership role and continue professional growth. He had been working down in the basement with the machines and the blinking lights and wanted to move into management. And our program was the bridge that allowed him to move up to management and expand that skill set. Quality management, doing it right. This is where you learn about continuous process improvement using data and information to guide decision making. So we don't just do stuff because that's the way we've always done it or that's the way we think it should be done. You can actually use numbers and defend this to upper management. We teach total quality management. We teach the plan, do, study, act scientific method. Ever heard of the Malcolm Baldridge Award or ISO 9001? When you come out of this course, you'll know what those are and how to qualify for them. And we apply it to a wide variety of manufacturing, healthcare, pretty much anything you can think of from hotels to vaccines um, can benefit from quality management. What do the students say? I've been leveraging Dr. Deming's principles in my daily life. Dr. Deming is one of the quality gurus. I mostly point to the case that we need a better change management process. That recommendation received laughter from a higher up person to which I replied, you laugh, but that's internal waste. And that's very inefficient, costly. The laughter then stopped. So this is an example where a student could really take these principles and apply them at work in a way that was uh, helpful to move the entire department forward. Who else do you want to meet? You want to meet Eric. He's from New York, a Yankee who came down to Arkansas virtually to come join our program. He had um, spent a lot of time um, in the military and was transitioning from military to civilian life. And so he said, I've filled leadership positions for the last 21 years and developing high performance teams. This field of study helped expand my experience and to me become a better operational leader. So this gave him civilian skill sets that he could then use as his transition from the military to the civilian life. Lean Six Sigma, this is such a cool class. I teach this one too sometimes. Uh, Lean Six Sigma applications are to manufacturing, service, and government processes. So wherever you are, you can use it. It's about improving productivity, increasing value, and eliminating waste. We look at translating customer feedback and enterprise goals into opportunities for improvement. And again, this is all in a formal, rigorous way. So it's not just like some consumer got me in the parking lot and told me they didn't like this, should do this. It talks about how to take charts and how to take figures and numbers and carefully measure what are you going to do. We use the DMAIC method. Uh, you come out of here sounding cool, super cool and say, I learned about DMAIC today. It means, um, <clears throat> excuse me, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. So this is literally the formalized way of going about making an improvement. The concept is you measure what you got, make one change at a time, measure the results. If the change was helpful, keep doing it. If it was not, go back and try something else. We also here focus on how to communicate results to stakeholders. This is good in two ways. Uh, the first way it's good is typically you're communicating upwards. And if you can communicate accurate information to the boss, they can often help make better company-wide decisions. And then the other way it's good is if you can communicate accurate information this is really good for your own career development because people begin to tap you as someone who's a good leader and a good communicator. You could also take this from Dave Peterson, who's possibly the only instructor out there who's cooler than me who teaches Lean Six Sigma. 
Um, Dave said this course has two superpowers. He, literally, you have students learning these concepts today and they apply them at work tomorrow. We have had students taking their Excel homework sheet Tuesday night into work on Wednesday morning and putting their work numbers in it instead and making decisions from that. And then he, Dave also says this cla the class project really integrates the material. You know, 80% of his students have done work-related projects, and Dave can tell that some of those small-scale class projects served as the catalyst for major change in their organizations. Another thing students really like about this is for your class project, you can take a work project, and you have the expertise of somebody like Dave or me looking over your work and making sure that it's done correctly at each way. So then you get a good grade in the class, and your organization also gets some really high carefully supervised work. Who else do you want to meet? You want to meet Alex Russo. He is originally from Ecuador and he's now up in Chico. He came to us with a BA in um, economics, so he, he could add when he came to our program, but he wasn't a super um, engineer. But he loved Lean Six Sigma. He said it was an amazing course in teaching him how a structured to continuous improvement can help take big steps and finally gearing your way of thinking in the right direction. And I think I'll turn it back over to Kara now. Thank you, Carrie. That was very, very, very wonderful. Thank you so much. Very informative. Yeah. Um, and again, I, you know, and Carrie's going to stay on the line with this for those of you who have questions for her. Um, and we'll have several others that will be on. We're going to, I want to reiterate what Carrie was saying. These student testimonials, you know, when she and I were starting to build this presentation, she said, you know, you've got all these student testimonials, you know, let's, let's, you know, let, let the students, you know, you know, uh, talk about our program. And so we've been doing this and every time uh, someone completes a comprehensive exam or someone does a very exciting project, um, the instructors and the leadership team reach out to me and I reach out to the student and they are more than happy to share their story and, and want to share their story with others and let other students know, hey, I was sitting here wondering what I was going to do and where I was going and then this program kind of solidified which direction and path I wanted to take. So. Uh, our student testimonials, you can find these on our Facebook page. We also have a LinkedIn page if it's a public page, if you'd like to search for that. And then, of course, Twitter, we're U of A underscore M O M. So, continuing on with the presentation, um, you know, people say, you know, again, why M S O M? And Carrie just said it. And uh, we have heard so many students say, I learned it today and I used it tomorrow, kind of like one uh, student who learned something and marched into her boss's office and said, hey, I can make this better and here's why. Um, I've heard so many students say, you know, I'm in leadership right now and I, I read this concept last night and I went straight into my boss and said, hey, man, we got to do this. And, and he was really excited about it. And we hear this all the time. And that's great because, you know, that way you don't have to wait to the end of your program to start using these in daily life. And it really helps you build yourself personally and professionally from what we hear from students. So the operations management is a high wage, high demand field spanning numerous industries. Again, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have on, on your specific situation. We are 100% online. However, we do also offer video synchronous or evening classes on campus, um, especially for our international students. Uh, we are a bit limited in these current times during the pandemic, but uh, we seem to be making it work. So uh, we're, we're uh, soldiering on here. Uh, we do not have any out-of-state tuition, so for domestic students, we have a flat tuition rate. It is $303.88 a credit hour plus a $50 flow technology fee. So the total for a three-hour course is going to be $1,061.64. We tell students that depending on the prerequisites, which I'll get to in just a moment, uh, depending on those prerequisite courses and how you satisfy those requirements, you can finish the degree within about twelve or 15000 um, which is very affordable for a master's in science. Um, and operations man and so you know get with your HR representative um, every company is different as far as tuition reimbursement and things like that um, we also have a lot of military folks that utilize their their TA so um, if you're a representative or we do have advisors that we can put you in contact with that um, work solely with military students as well uh, you can learn from professors with current and relevant business experience. These are STEM oriented courses and they're designed to meet tomorrow's needs. And this pandemic has really kind of uh, ramped up the projects that we've seen and some of the uh, 
things that we're seeing from instructors and classes. And I'll speak quick to Carrie saying uh, in the Lane 6 class, I just had a, a brand new student. She started in the summer and everything was going fine. And she was really excited about the Lane 6 certificate. And then during the first eight weeks of the fall semester, they had a major switch problem at her home, which actually forced her family into a hotel, which where they've been for months. And to help her deal with that situation, she actually turned her Lean Six project into the problem that she was having. And the professor was pretty impressed at, at the creativity that, that she did with that. So um, again, anything's possible in that class, apparently. So we have 10 graduate courses. There are four required. There's four core courses. And then there's six select. Um, you do have to maintain a 3.0 GPA for graduation, uh, but our flexible degree plan, like just the four classes that Gary just highlighted, those are kind of more geared towards where you are right now. But it's hard to, our, we have many, many, many other electives that you can choose from to help tailor your needs. You can also earn a graduate certificate currently the MSOM program without taking any extra courses. So what that means is that if you do choose the Master of Science and Operations Management uh, program plan, you can also add a certificate and the classes that you take will count for both of those. So uh, a student who will graduate with the MSOM degree can also graduate with a project management certificate and a Lean Six Sigma certificate or our third option is our Homeland Security, which we'll get to in just a moment. So again, I want to reiterate, we are a non-thesis program, which is uh, very desirable to many people because take it from someone who did have to write a thesis, it's a very daunting task at the end of any program. And it's almost like you just keep trudging ahead and the, the days just keep getting darker because you know you're approaching that. Uh, we have a comprehensive exam. And what that entails is two parts. And you'll have a video presentation that you'll upload for review. Once that is approved, you will take an oral uh, video, uh, live oral uh, comprehensive exam with our leadership team, with our committee. And it's a very friendly, positive experience. It's just kind of a conversation as far as following up on your presentation. And you get to ask us questions and we ask you questions. And we really benefit from this and it helps us improve the program every time we hear from a student going through the comprehensive exam because we can ask some and uh, you know follow up questions as far as how can we improve this class or you know in your situation what else could have benefited uh, you from that so it's it's really it's it's a great it's a great experience so uh, I will have a disclaimer on the statement here in just a second but there is no GRB or GMAT required as long as you have a three point GPA or higher Okay, so how we calculate that is you can either take the last 60 credit hours attempted coursework um, and have it be above a 3.0, or you can have a cumulative GPA on a conferred bachelor's degree. Um, you can enter from any undergraduate degree. Again, I was looking through registrations this morning and I was so excited to see the wide range of backgrounds from criminal justice to psychology to industrial engineering, healthcare, business. Um, you know, we've got a lot of ag business up here in, in Northwest Arkansas. So, um, great to see that we've got a wider range of people. So we do have any, we do take any undergraduate degree as long as it is, as it is from an accredited institution. So we have five eight-week sessions per year. You can start in January, March, May, August, or December. You can complete as quickly as one year, or you have up to six years to finish. So most working adults, I will say, um, and this is one of the main questions I get from prospects that, uh, since I deal with admissions, I talk to a lot of people that are thinking about the program, and their first question is, how many classes do I have to each semester? And I tell them to think about it semester. Uh, most working adults will take one class per term. Our terms are eight weeks, and so you will actually be finishing two classes a semester, but we think on a on an eight-week term basis. Uh, some students know that the job is going to be here in one part of the year than the other, and they may just, you know, opt to take one eight-week one class and take eight weeks two off. Some double up in the summer because they're of the of the light demand for their job. So whatever your situation is, you would work with your specific advisor to see what best fits you. 
So the COVID-19 announcement, I think about everybody has one of these now, um, effective spring, summer, and fall of 21. So next year, all three admission terms. At this time, we are waiving the GRE for applicants that have a 2.5 to a 2.99 undergraduate GPA with admission exceptions. Uh, what that is is that we just monitor your progress, um, and we've never really had any any issues. Um, applicants with above a 3.0 GPA, it's automatically way for any term. So once the GRE testing centers resume normal operations, possibly in 2022, uh, the standard admissions requirements will go back into full effect. If you, again, if you have any questions about that or if you would like your transcript evaluated, I have absolutely no problem doing that. I do that all the time for folks. Um, I also double check grad school as far as my GPA calculations and and whether they're correct, and, um, uh, if it's uh, for the admission process. So admission process, speaking of, um, the online application is free. Um, unofficial transcripts are accepted for evaluation purposes only, but however, once you are admitted into the program and start taking classes, your official transcript will be required uh, by the graduate school. But again, unofficial transcripts, if you've got those or have access to them, um, those can be used for evaluation purposes and uh, can be uh, sufficient for being admitted into the program and to the U of A. We don't require any resume, letters of recommendations, or personal statements. Uh, simply fill out the application, upload your unofficial transcripts, and you're done. Um, it's probably the simplest process I've seen to a graduate program yet. So prerequisites. Uh, these do not need to be completed for admission. But they will be the first required courses for the program. Uh, like Carrie said, you are going to be using Excel a lot. <laughs> and so we have a prerequisite to that, and I'll get to that in a second. But um, these prereqs are put in place just to make sure that you have basic knowledge so you don't struggle um, in the program. We want you to succeed, and we want to set you up for success. So uh, transcripts are reviewed for undergraduate equivalency. So many of you I saw had you know, some sort of business degree, whether it be a BBA or a BS. Um, and so usually business majors have three out of the four already. Um, and we start with law and ethics, so that's business law. Um, we have several law classes that we have accepted. Uh, we do require to re read through the course descriptions to make sure that it had some sort of contract and supports and, and certain aspects um, of that. But, uh, we will evaluate that on, on an individual basis. It doesn't necessarily exactly have to be business law. Um, industrial cost analysis, so that's an accounting course. Again, uh, some students have you know, maybe went to a community college early on and they just had an intro to accounting class. Business majors likely have to do financial and managerial. Um, if you've had an MBA, then you've had some sort of managerial finance. So again, evaluation um, in, on an individual basis uh, for that. Applied statistics, now this is stat from any discipline. So I saw some psychology majors in here, if you're listening, um, we take a behavioral psych, uh, a behavioral stat class, so whether that be so, you know, sociology stat or stat, um, stat for engineers or math majors. Again, we take business statistics or intro to stat. Uh, and then our final one is intro to decision support tools. And if you have any questions about this Excel course, we usually say this is our a ramped up Excel course. It's a heavy, heavy duty Excel course. And, and Dr. Bean teaches this and actually developed um, the efficiency exam that's available, you can take that for free. If you've been using Excel on your job for 20 years and you think that pivot tables are fun and, and you have no problem doing them, then maybe that proficiency exam is for you. But I will tell you that most students have said, and I thought I knew Excel before. Now I really know Excel, and I'm sure Carrie has heard that a lot. Um, now, the first three prerequisites, the business law, the accounting, and the study. Uh, if you think, hey, you know, I, I really, you know, I want to get started in the program. I don't want to waste any time. We have a, a more affordable option than taking a three-hour credit course that, of course, is going to be, you know, tuition. We accept um, prerequisites through sailor.org, and they are a free self-paced course. You pay $25 for the exam, and if you earn a 70% or better on the final exam, it's a $25 fee for proctoring, then you earn a certificate. That will satisfy those prerequisites. Uh, they have a business law on there. 
have an accounting course, they have financial and or managerial, and then they also have uh, two options for a statistics course. So questions on that, again, follow up with me. I'd be happy to go over any of those with you. Application deadlines, so again, like I said, we work on eight-week terms. Uh, for spring 2021 to start in January, uh, which I believe the semester starts January 14th, um, December 10th will be the deadline. Uh, you know, backed up against the holidays and and people working from home, you do want to make sure that all the applications are processed and you are matriculated into the system in time. So we're not kind of doing a bad dash at the end. So December 10th will, will be for the January start date. But you know, no hurries if 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 you know, you're still thinking about it and think, well, I'm, I still don't know if I want to do this or not. I need to take some, I need to talk to my boss. I need to talk to HR. Um, then you can start in March and that deadline for eight week two is February 18th. So you've got some time there and then you could certainly start the course in March. Summer um, is going to be May 10th and then our fall deadlines there are August 9th and September 28th. Okay, some of the good stuff here. So the graduate certificates with project management, Lean Six Sigma, and our newest one that's gaining popularity is Home Loan Security. Um, these three, again, you can, I'm not going to read everything to you. These folks, I'm sure, can, who are all here can, can read. Um, but uh, we can answer questions specifically uh, if you are interested in taking the PMP exam. Um, as well as taking maybe a Lean Six certification. So again, we've got folks on there that if you have questions on that, uh, we'd be happy to address those. Graduate certificates, there are only four classes. Um, you can obtain this as part of your master's degree without taking any extra classes like I mentioned before, or it can stand alone. You simply, you don't have to be a master of science student in order to earn one of our graduate certificates. And so the criteria for the admission process for that is you only need a 2.5 undergraduate GPA for admission. Again, there's no GRE or GMAT ever for just the certificates. Uh, classes, again, they double count. And this is also a way to transition to MSOM uh, without having a GRE option. Right now, that GRE requirement is pretty lax because of the pandemic. But uh, we have some students that started the project management the the student that I mentioned that started in the summer uh, just doing a Lean Six certificate, she goes, you know what, I work in healthcare, I don't need all this extra stuff, I just want to do the certificate. Well, I just got her admission application last week for the, for the Master of Science, so she's enjoying our program pretty pretty well to, to go ahead and jump in full force. So, hey, our question is, are you ready to be a raiser? Uh, like Carrie mentioned, we're so excited that we can actually get excited about about our football team this year and our new coach and how well they're doing. So, okay, uh, while I am kind of going over some nuts and bolts here, Carrie's going to stay on the line. I've got, um, we've got an instructor on here, uh, Mr. Nethercutt, who can answer any questions about the project management. Uh, if you have your questions, please type them in the chat box while I'm kind of do the closing remarks here. If you have any questions concerning the Homeland Security, I do believe I saw Dr. Ham on here. Yep, he's still in here. Um, and then I've also got Carrie, who can answer all the questions that uh, and more, I think, um, on the four electives that, that she presented on, which was the quality management, risk management, the Lean Six, and then supply chain. Um, again, our spring 2021 admission application is open. Uh, I will be following up with you once this recording is initialized and I have it posted to YouTube. Um, I will I will supply that link to uh, your HR group who I've been working with and she can send that out to everyone who registered today and uh, maybe who weren't able to make it or maybe you want to share this with a colleague. And I'll also provide some links about course descriptions and uh, just general information on our website. Um, but if you have any specific questions, please go ahead and start typing them in the chat box there. Um, links will be provided. Again, our generic email is msom at uark.edu. Um, or you can directly email me, which I think you have all my contact information from the registration. And again, thank you, Carol. She'll be managing our chat box here. And I know some folks, oh, Karen says the chat is off. Let me the settings here. Thank you, Karen. No, Carrie, can you get in there? There we go. It is unchecked. So, Karen, can you type that for me again? See if that works. OK. 
Carrie, can you? Okay, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was know. just going to say, this, this is when we need a bunch of undergrads around because they I would know, right? certainly <laughs> test the chat. Exactly, right? Um, I have no idea how that got turned off. I've done about 20 of these this year, and that's never happened. <laughs> Uh, so Karen, thank you for being my sidekick as always. Um, Karen and I have known each other for several, several years. <laughs> and uh, I knew her back in her undergrad. And so she's been a long time employee. So I appreciate all your work, Karen. Um, again, Karen uh, Barrera uh, is one of your liaisons. And if you have any questions about um, their educational reimbursement program with our guests, please reach out to her. And again, we can answer any questions on um, your specific, um, maybe your previous coursework or the position that you're in now. Like, you know, if I took this class, how would that help me advance my career? Um, you know, we've got um, Homeland Security. Uh, we have drone class. Uh, we have the unmanned aerial systems, and Dr. Ham is is our expert in that. And Dr. Beam here is is wonderful to talk about Lean Six and Excel and and many of the other things. She's she is a true asset to our program. I can tell you that. So we'll get to our first question here from Kelly. Um, and I think I might just have you. Um, would it be available for part time employees for reimbursement, Kelly? I think. Um, Karen can answer that in the chat, Karen, if you wish, or chat her, um, or I would hook up, you know, through email. Um, I'm not, uh, I didn't want to include that here in the presentation just because I'm sure there's many things to know about that, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say I'm an expert on education reimbursement for ArcBest, but um, as Karen said to Kelly, she'll be emailing you that answer. So, Kelly, thanks for, for asking that. So how many, Scott has a, thank you, Scott, uh, for the compliment. It says, great presentation with a lot of great information. Yes, we did throw a lot at you. That's why I'm kind of droning on a little bit, uh, no pun intended, that um, just kind of get everybody to see if they gather their thoughts or, you know, oh, well, how does this work for me? And uh, so we'll stay on for, for a few minutes at least. Um, but Scott asked, how many credit hours is each week class? Great question. Um, an eight-week class is three credit hours, Scott. So uh, I don't want to say they're too fast-paced for you to handle. And Dr. Beer, what would you say to somebody as far as the pacing goes in a class during an eight-week session being a three-hour course? So we tell people you should expect this class to take about 10 hours of your life. And most students find that's a about three hours of interacting with us in the classroom, like either video chatting with student, with classmates, posting to discussion boards, viewing videos, uh, that kind of stuff, and then about seven hours outside of that doing your homework. So it would be reading a textbook, um, studying on your own. So generally about 10 hours of your life. Uh, there are many personality types and many approaches to this 10 hours. Some people just divide it up and they do two hours a day, Monday through Friday, and they have their weekends off and everything's done seven years ahead of time. And other people have a very exciting night, um, the night everything is due. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Beam. Um, I notice a lot of folks have questions about the educational reimbursement. Um, so I'm super happy that <laughs> Karen decided to join us today. Um, but the one thing I do want to mention um, as far as the ask for to pay for tuition, uh, when you apply as a graduate student okay, to the federal financial aid application, you are considered a graduate student. Okay, so therefore your FAFSA is only going to pay for graduate courses. Um, we have the four undergraduate prerequisites, and so if you are looking for the FAFSA to cover those, they will not. Uh, there is included in our mission letter. We are not financial aid advisors, but I do want to preface that um, the four undergraduate courses will likely not be covered by financial aid because you're not an undergraduate student, you'd be considered a graduate student, but you would have to work with financial aid, an individual advisor, as well as your HR representative to, to make sure that all your tuition benefits um, will cover what you need. Looks like we've got some part-time folks on here, so that's great that you all are interested in our programs. That's very exciting. Um, well, again, um, for more information, it looks like I think there's more questions for Karen than there are for us, but that's totally fine. I'm, I'm totally, I'm totally great. Uh, 
uh, again, please email me. Um, again, I am, uh, let's see, so if we have one question says, I may have missed it, but what is the total tuition cost for the program? So great question. Again, we can go back to that. Um, the total cost for a three-hour class is $1,061.64. Okay, you have a total of 10 classes in the program. So roughly between 12 and 15,000 for the entire program, we say that because everybody's individual transcripts are gonna be different. So one person may only have to take one undergraduate prereq because they've had the other three. Some may only have um, one, which is a stat class, um, coming in on their transcript. So then they would have to take three prerequisites to get into the program, which is gonna be, you know, 3,000 or more um, additions. So we say between 12 and 15, and um, that way, once you're, if you want you know, myself to evaluate your transcript, I can tell you exactly what you're going to need, um, and then you can calculate exactly the cost of the program for you. So every person is going to be different because of those prereqs coming into the program. I think Aaron's got a question for you, Karen. I probably should have made you moderator. I can do that as well, but you seem to be managing the chat just fine. Um, so is there a difference on the educational reimbursement between ArcBest and ABS? That's a really good question. I didn't think about the different subsidiaries under ArcBest. Um, and I, I'm going to go ahead and share everyone's registration, which includes your email with Karen. She's going to follow up with you all. Uh, that way, everybody's got all the same information. Um, and so, Carol, thank you, uh, states that it's about 10600 for the 10 graduate courses and then cost, of course, for the prereq courses and the cost. Uh, we do utilize um, a more affordable option for some of our classes called First Day Inclusive Access, and that is a digital book that you um, download. Um, it's a little bit more affordable. It's through the Barnes & Noble website. And, Carrie, I don't know, do you use any? First day materials? Yes, the Intro to Operations Management class uses a first day inclusive access. And some of our other classes, like for example, the decision support tools, the Excel class, we actually use LinkedIn Learning, which is completely free with your UR enrollment. Thank you for that. Um, so let's see. Getting lost in all the chats here. So Renee says you mentioned an alternate for the prereqs. Are those on the website? Um, I'm going to put those in right now. It's called sailor.org, and I just put that in the chat. Again, you're going to want to look for a uh, business law class, a statistics class, and um, an accounting class. And then again, if you feel like you are very proficient in Excel, um, I I can provide those study materials for you for the exam that Dr. Beam has created, and you can kind of judge for yourself whether or not you feel what your level is and the concepts that we test on. And Richard, thank you for your question. Um, Richard asks, is there a capstone at the end of the program to measure learning? We've got Carol Altamon here, assistant director. She and Carrie both sit on the committee um, for the comp exam. So Carrie, I'm going to let you go first. What what would you say to Rich as far as what the capstone is and explain the comprehensive exam and kind of what you see being a committee member? Oh, sure. So typically when I hear the word capstone, I think of a capstone project, like something somebody's done over several weeks and they did a big presentation. That is not our comprehensive exam. Our comprehensive exam instead is something you study for. Then you show up for 20 minutes. It would be the student and committee members, one of whom could be me. And you'll, you'll get asked questions like, you know, for example, in our program, we teach graduates to make data-driven decisions. Can you think of one data-driven decision-making technique you've learned in our program and tell us how you applied it at work? Or what is the most important thing for a leader to have? Or let's say you've got two different supply chains, one with a longer lead time, higher variability, and one with a shorter lead time and lower variability. Which one would you prefer and why would you expect to have higher levels of inventory and why? So they're just oral questions, and then the student would answer. And typically, if you get the right answer off the bat, great, we move on. Um, if you don't, you often can buy a vowel or you get a little prompting. You know, someone can help you think it through.
there's like deafening silence. You guys are all thinking, oh my gosh, the comp is so far away. I assure you, um, we haven't bitten a comp student yet, so you're all safe, even despite the fact that Halloween is coming up. Yes, if anyone can hear me, this is Carol Altum. I would uh, reiterate that we have a very high pass rate. It's uh, over 97% pass rate. Um, the students study for the comp exam while they're preparing for their um, PowerPoint presentation and video presentation. So when they come to the oral part of their comp exam, they're ready. They're pretty much ready to go. So it's not anything to be um, nervous about, but probably 100% of the students who show up are nervous, but um, it, it doesn't take too long. Um, and again, we have a very high pass rate. Uh, yes, th there is a very high pass rate. And I think, um, you know, we. St I, when I came on into this position back in January, um, you know, I was, you know, trying to learn the job and the ropes and, and students were just emailing me just completely panicked. I mean, like literally couldn't get out of bed thinking about doing the comp exam. And I thought, where is all this anxiety coming from? So, you know, um, because we're on a full online program, we're, we sometimes miss that human factor as far as being one on one, you know, advising our students in the office. And so I thought, you know what, we need to come up with something to kind of ease some fears. And so, um, Carol and, and I both uh, do a, a once a semester, so fall, spring, and summer. We do info sessions for our current students to be like, please don't worry. It is a very positive experience. It's really a chance for us to ask you questions because we're so excited that you learned all this, and and you know we want to ask you uh, follow up questions about you know how you implemented this in your job, and so. It's more of a conversation. It's not an interview. So, um, again, very positive experience. And as you can tell from Carrie's presentation, I don't think she bites very hard. So, um, it's a it's it's a great it's a great thing to look forward to. And and really, when people are coming into the program from an advising standpoint, I tell them, you know, from the time you start intro to operations management, and Carrie can kind of probably back me up on this, is that go ahead and start thinking ahead. And because you're not going to do a brain dump, kind of like when we, when we did when we were undergrads, right? Was like, oh, that class is over. Good. Okay, I'm done with it. I need to forget everything I just learned. Uh, we're not going to do that. You're going to build. And so I tell people, you know, start a journal, start an outline, a binder, something on your, you know, Microsoft notes or do whatever and just kind of start jotting down all the important things that you learned and, and that you remember because I guarantee you when by the time you get to the end of the program, after you've taken 10 graduate courses, it's going to be really hard to remember what you took a year and a half ago in intro or a year ago in project management. So from an advising standpoint, that's some of the best advice I can give my students is start thinking about it now. And that way, when you do start to prep for your presentation, then you're more organized. It's a more positive experience for you because you're not stressed out trying to remember what you learned a year and a half ago. Um, <laughs> So, Can I just jump in? I want to say one yeah. thing about that, and then I want to jump over to the seventh incarnation of Aaron. I hope that is um, Aaron dialing in seven times instead of quintuplets or however many that would be. But no, and on the off chance a student doesn't pass the comp the first time, what they get is a list of things to study and some coaching and a second attempt at the exam. And definitely there is um, very much an attitude of like, let's get some success going here because it doesn't look great for us to spend all this time teaching somebody and then not let them out of the program. So we are highly, highly motivated to give specific coaching to succeed. And then, um, Aaron, you're, okay, yes, I'm glad there's just one of you. Um, seven times is good. Um, <laughs> so your question is, you know, I've got a bachelor's in something that's like maybe not engineering, you know, am I going to be okay in this program? To which I say, yes, yes, yes. We basically have two types of people coming in. There are people with um, more businessy, um, soft skills, leadership, organizational changey type experience who need to learn some more quantitative hard skills to be competitive in the job market. And then we have some people who have undergraduate engineering degrees or they're currently working in a technical field and they cannot get out of the basement to save their lives. And the reason they can't do that is because they can't manage people, they don't know how to deal with projects, budgets, leadership change. So each type of student it's presented learning opportunities for the other. So if you are from more of a businessy background, I would expect your big learning opportunities to be with 
Excel skills, so maybe a little bit of statistics, a little bit of forecasting, that kind of stuff. And if you're coming at this from a pretty solid tech thing, I would expect you to find it just as challenging to take a leadership class because you have to do all that reading and then you have to deal with people. And so we support both types of learnings and we want to create graduates who have a really solid skill set on both sides of the, both sides of the brain. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, I'm 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 trying to keep all of the the questions in here, so I'm glad that you uh, addressed Aaron's real quick before it got lost in the uh, in the chat here. Um, there was a uh, question early on, and Karen, thank you for for chatting that. Um, anyone who is an international uh, considered an international student will need to work with the international student office on campus and the graduate school uh, as far as you know visa and what requirements and, and English proficiency and things like that so um, I can certainly get Karen those links um, for you and uh, you know work help work with you and, and, and get you uh, connected to the right people. Uh, Karen uh, Barrera, yes, uh, she did graduate from this program um, and so if you have any questions, I'm sure she could be of much help as well. And let's see. Um, so we addressed Aaron's question. Um, and as far as the FAFSA 2, again, I want to reiterate the FAFSA does only covers the graduate level courses because you would be admitted as a graduate student. Um, so you would have to work with your financial aid advisor as far as uh, covering the undergraduate prereqs um, and working with your HR representative. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen Kelly has a question. I can answer a little bit of it, and maybe you can answer the rest of it. Um, okay. The question is, we've seen an array of people with degrees in different areas. Do we see more in a certain area than others? I would say we have about 10%-ish of our OM students who have engineering degrees, and so the other 90%-ish do not. And then I don't have a good breakdown of the other 90%. Do you have any insight into that? So I don't have the hard numbers in front of me, but I can tell you from somebody who is, uh, you know, wading through <laughs> admissions applications on a daily basis, um, we have a lot of business majors. Um, when I say a lot, probably upwards, probably 30, 40 percent, um, just because, uh, like Carrie mentioned earlier, we're kind of a cross between industrial engineering type degree and an MBA. Uh, some students don't want that MBA um, and I've I used to uh, in a previous position I handled undergraduate business students and so I know a lot about where they would want to go and they said you know it just doesn't make sense for me to move on to an MBA because I want to know how to do something I just don't want to know what it is and I've, I've heard that a lot um, and so we do have industrial engineers uh, mechanical engineering civil engineering um, like Harry said is about 10 to maybe 15 percent um, of our uh, of our students and then again we have a large majority of business I do see um, I'm starting to see more I don't want to say like uh, influx of, of applications but I I am seeing more from the criminal justice background type and we actually did a student testimonial on one of our students Crandall who you can look on our Facebook um, he uh, was very interested, and I can actually make Dr. Ham here, uh, moderator here in one second, and he can attest to this as far as the gaining um, popularity of our Homeland Security and some of the other classes that we have uh, discussed, and I'm going to go ahead and make him moderator here. He can turn on his mic and let me know if he wants to jump in, but um, we do have a lot of law enforcement. He works for the UAPD, and uh, we got the drone class, and we've got um, Dr. Ham. Just uh, yep. So yeah, Are you there. Well, okay, I'm gonna let you take over that conversation for me. All right. So well, in in particular, the Homeland uh, Certificate is designed in the classes that support it. Uh, it's built on the American Society of Industrial Security uh, body of knowledge, or they call it the Protection of Assets. It's the same thing basically, but uh, there's a, a growing, whether it's uh, cybersecurity operations managers or uh, individuals that uh, are, are just an operations manager, but if you own the facility, you're responsible for physical security. Um, there are um, no less than 30 
homeland security programs that have um, uh, come up after September 11th. And if you talk, for instance, for uh, ArcBest, or if you talk about anything in banking, you've got requirements on reporting about uh, the movement of uh, money. You have import export controls, sometimes controls if you do any uh, international business. You, uh, for those that are uh, involved, in, uh, we see folks that are underwriters trying to figure out, trying to measure risk, and they need to understand, all right, what are the requirements? I'm trying to evaluate whether, whether or not somebody is compliant with the homeland requirements, and therefore, what would the risk be if we offer insurance? So the the growth of that, along with uh, what we would think of the standard, hey, I need to use a drone for supply chain. What are the requirements uh, for me to do that, uh, both FAA and then the uh, requirements for homeland security? Or I, you know, I am a uh, you know, chief of staff of a police department, and I've got all these people I have to manage. But I know that I've got some very specific requirements that I have to comply with. So how do I put it together? We have got cybersecurity, uh, the risk core, uh, um, the new course that we just started in resilient uh, design, which has to do with uh, you know leadership in a crisis and how you design resilience into your uh, systems that all operations managers need. So this area is has been growing for some time, but it is really exploding here in the last uh, three to five years, and the need for individuals with those. Uh, those skills. So happy to answer any questions that anybody would have in those areas. Great. Thank you, Dr. Ham. And I always am appreciative that you are able to jump on at a moment's notice when I put you on the spot to answer some questions like that. Um, again, Dr. Ham can answer anything on Homeland Security, um, anything about project management. We've got Dr. Beam on um, that can answer any questions about Lean Six Sigma. So you've got my contact information. I wanna let everybody get back to their day. I know uh, some of us are on Central Time, but some are on Eastern, some are on Pacific. So depending on where you're at in your day, you're probably needing to get to it. Um, Kelly, thank you. Um, glad you could join us. And I just wanna make sure that if you, like I said, uh, Karen is, Herrera, who was on here with us from ArcBest, um, she's going to have all the information to send out to everyone who attended. Anyone who's interested, she'll have all that. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions or and or find the answer for you or put you in contact with the correct person to get you that information. But again, happy to look over transcripts. If you go home tonight and start thinking about it, shoot me an email um, and we can certainly um, Answer all your questions and and you know give you things to think about and give you um, additional information or websites or or uh, study guides or anything about the sailor.org uh, free prerequisite courses. So again, we covered so much in this session, and I want to thank all who attended. Um, again, uh, thank you, Carol, for uh, always being my sidekick. And Dr. Beam, wonderful presentation. I learned a lot. Uh, it's good to, that we can use um, our students um, to tell our story because I think that's the most important. So again, thank you, Dr. Beam, for all of her efforts on this. And uh, Dr. Ham, and you've got my, um, I'll leave the screen up just uh, for about five more minutes. But we'll go ahead and conclude this session.